And now it's time to thickness the top and the back plates. I'm doing this with a hand plane. The first thing that you have to do, the very first step is to make sure that your hand plane is really, really sharp. You see I'm coming at the grain from an angle or I'm coming at the top. Well, that's because I'm coming across the grain of the wood at a 45 degree angle or thereabouts. This helps to avoid tear out in the wood where the plane pulls grains of wood out. That aforementioned very very sharp blade also helps this. Uh, if you, in fact if you have a dull blade it doesn't matter what you do you're gonna have tear out and particularly in this spruce a lot of people think you know hardwoods the back of this guitar is made of sapili and it's got interlocking grain that's not very friendly to planes but even that won't tear like this spruce will if you have a dull blade and you want to avoid that because you, you want to thickness the top to a certain thickness and if you get tear out then you have to plane or sand that top until that tear out is gone and you don't really have any way of controlling how deep that tear out is so you really want to avoid it and you see I'm moving the plane more straight across now you'll see me move it in different directions you see I'm at a different side of the wood than I was earlier uh, as I work the wood and see how it acts then I'll know and understand what I can do and you see me taking calipers I'm checking the perimeter and what I really want to do is I want to make the perimeter a bit thinner than the thickness that I'm shooting for for the top plate or the back plate because in my experience for the way that I plane with a hand plane I generally tend to get thinner on the ends and thicker in the middle so my goal for this top is that it be a hundred thousandths to a hundred and ten thousandths of an inch thick that is probably the smallest range of varying thickness that I can get on such a thin plate like this with a hand plane and so my outside edges are probably gonna fall a little bit uh, thinner than even that but that's all right if it's in that range we're good I dearly love the way the sound that a hand plane makes as it goes across the wood now you'll see me moving these clamps quite a bit and I'll tend to work the corners that the clamps were on a little bit while I'm thinning the plate to try to thin that section since I did not hit it as I was planing because the clamp was covering it. And one of the reasons that you'll see me plane from different directions uh, on the wood as well as move around from different to different areas of the top is because if I planed in just one direction from one side of the wood then uh, I would probably end up with one side or one end being thinner than the other in this way this also helps me to kind of try to control consistency while I'm thicknessing this material I'll do the same on the back plate as well
Now, if I had the money, I could build like a thickness sander or buy one. A lot of builders use things like thickness sanders. They get the top, depending on the uh, variables of their machine, they get the top a lot closer overall or a lot more even overall in thickness. But A, I don't have the money for that. And B, I really love hand planes. They're probably my most favorite tool, uh, followed very closely by a chisel, a very sharp chisel. The sound they make as they go over the wood, the way they feel while I'm cutting the wood with them, I don't think I would use a thickness sander if I had one. Uh, that's just not the way that I like to work. I'll use a power tool if it makes sense. Uh, but I love hand tools and using them and so I will most of the time choose a hand tool over a power tool. Pro probably 90% of the time. Keeping track of the thickness of the top in different areas. I don't want to go too far under. And so once I get the top where I want it, then we move on to the back. And you see I'm planning pretty much with the grain here. When I move over to the other side from that center there, I'll be going against the grain. And you really need a really sharp plane and you really need my cap iron or uh, chip breaker is really, really close, adjusted really, really close to the edge, as close as I can possibly get it to the edge of the plain iron and still get it to cut. Uh, the cut is adjusted as shallow as I can possibly get it. The uh, blade is as sharp as I can get it. Because I want to do my best to avoid wood tear out. Because this has a what they call an interlocking grain which means it basically crisscrosses all over the place all over itself and just it can be difficult similar to like curly woods or quilted woods here you see me changing the direction of the cut I really like the sapili but it, it's a mahogany substitute uh, it's not mahogany although Builders and furniture makers and everybody else calls it Sapili Mahogany. And it's a substitute for mahogany. It, it sounds, from what I read, and from my experience, I have a friend who has a, a guitar made from one. Top, back, and sides. And neck, and whole nine yards. Uh, it sounds a lot like mahogany, but I think it's uh, a little bit brighter, a little bit louder. But it does not work like mahogany, and I'm talking about Honduran mahogany, genuine Honduran mahogany. To me, genuine Honduran mahogany has kind of almost, almost a buttery kind of feel when you cut it with a plane or a chisel. Uh, and it can crumble and tear out very easily, even if it's not figured. That's my experience with it. It's particularly not so much with a hand plane, but if I take like a a rasp, a wood rasp, or something like that to it, it it'll blow out the other side when you're coming across it with a rasp if you're not careful. This stuff, I haven't worked it with a rasp, so I don't know about that. But it's possible that it would. But this stuff is harder. 
than Honda or Mahogany. It's a, in my opinion, just a little bit heavier. It has more of a glassy kind of feel when you cut it, run across it with a plane. It also kind of, depending on what direction of the grain that you cut the thing in, and you can kind of see some of it under the plane right now. It kind of gets a shiny, a sheeny kind of appearance to the wood. Just uh, wonderfully hard. Uh, I don't know that it's hard as something like maple or something like that. But it's a, it's a nice hard wood. And it's a joy to work with. I'll definitely use it again. So now I flipped it over to the other side. In most of the books, the Campiano book that I'm using, and most of the instructions you get from other builders, they'll say stuff to a beginner like, uh, you know, if you use a hand plane, uh, thickness on the inside. So that, especially on the top, you know, if you get tear out and stuff, nobody can see it. Well, okay, I see that. But you're going to see the back of this, both sides of the back of this guitar. You're going to see the one side through the sound hole. I want it to look good on both sides. And it's the same with the top as far as looking good. you Never really going to see that inside of the top, but I will know that it's there, and I want it the best that I can do. I might not be uh, as good as somebody that's been doing it 20 years or something like that, but I will know that that top's ugly underneath, and no thank you. Also, uh, when I go to glue braces to it on the inside of the top... I want a nice, fresh, clean surface to do that with. So, that's my philosophy anyway. And this top, the top I got between a, a hundred and a hundred and ten thousandths thickness. This back I'm thicknessing to right around a hundred and ten, a hundred and fifteen. And I got in that ballpark. trying to build as light as I can I don't know if I will achieve that but that's what I'm uh, striving toward you see sometimes I mean that grain it grabs that plane I could back off the cut and it wouldn't do that as much but you know I don't want to be here all day so, and now we're going to check again with the calipers. And I was close, so now I'm going to take it up from the board and check it. I appreciate everybody coming along. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, as always, thanks a lot for watching, commenting. Bless you, and I'll talk to you later.